National Broadcasting Company presents Transcribed, The Magnificent Montague, starring Monty Woolley. <laughs> Alas, poor Montague. The Magnificent Montague, Dean of the Shakespearean Stage, has sunk to radio. He is Uncle Goodhart, hero of an afternoon program. Magneto, of course. The world of the theater must never know of his downfall. It is morning in the Montague apartment. His wife, Lily, and Agnes, the maid, are awaiting his arrival at the breakfast table. The phone rings. Agnes, the phone. Got it, honey. The residence of Edwin Montague and Lily Boehm. Agnes on this end. You who? Mr. Manick of Empire Pictures, Hollywood? You want Montague? You got the wrong boy. No, I'm sure you got the wrong one. This one's never even seen a movie. <laughs> Who knows why? Maybe he hates popcorn. <laughs> Sorry. Who was it, Agnes? Somebody from a Hollywood motion picture company. Wanted Montague. I told him he had the wrong Montague. Edwin? Hollywood? <laughs> we better not even tell him I spoke to someone from Hollywood over that phone. He'll have it taken out and sterilized. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine Edwin and... I'll get it. The residence of Edwin Montague... What? Oh, you again. Look, Buster, you got the wrong Montague. You obviously want one of them Hollywood stars like Montague Cliff or Robert Montague. It's <laughs> a <laughs> layoff, huh? Same man? Yeah. Sounded like he was on the make. <laughs> Kept calling me darling. <laughs> Why does that only happen to me on the phone? <laughs> Agnes, you know how those Hollywood people talk. I'll take it this time. Hello? No, I'm Mrs. Montague. Well, I'm sure you have the wrong Montague. My husband is a famous Shakespearean actor. Well, he hates Hollywood, and after the many public statements he's made concerning movies, I'm sure the feeling is mutual. Now, please stop ringing this number. Same guy, huh? Mm-hmm. I hope the phone didn't waken Edwin. Heaven forbid he shouldn't get his 17 hours of sleep. <laughs> well, he was at a celebration at his proscenium club last night. What for? Did their youngest member collect his first social security check? <laughs> this means the club's now 100% on the government. Now, Agnes, those actors in the club are not that old. Are you kidding? They still talk of how they entertain the soldiers during the war. At Valley Forge. <laughs> I, I, I hear him stirring. Uh-uh, the monster's up. Now, Agnes, please. When he shows up, it may be nine o'clock to you, but to me, it's the end of a perfect day. <laughs> have you his breakfast? Almost. I got his oatmeal ready. All I have to do is grind up the glass to put in it. <laughs> Agnes, try and get along with Edwin. Now, this morning, why don't you greet him with a cheery hello? I'd rather do it with a howitzer. <laughs> Must you always fight? No, I could always just stand by and watch myself get killed. <laughs> now, really, you know, Edwin, a barking dog never bites. Are you kidding? What do you think these scars on my legs are, beauty spots? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, stop exaggerating. Try and understand him. You know, honey, for 25 years, I've been trying to understand your husband. Then one day, like a bolt out of the blue, it hit me. I suddenly knew. What? He's a jerk. <laughs> Agnes, if you'd... Uh-oh, Edwin's up. <laughs> the call of the wild. <laughs> Good morning, Lily. Where's Agnes? Here I am, making toast. Oh, for one brief, ecstatic moment, I thought she wasn't here. <laughs> Edwin. Somehow, I keep dreaming of Agnes being hit by a truck. <laughs> and what was that other dream? Why don't you hang around sometime when I'm making a cake? I'd like to get your beard caught in the mix master. <laughs> Seriously, Agnes? Why did you come to work for us and plague my life? Weren't you happy wrestling on television? <laughs> Stop it, Edward. Why don't you bury the hatchet? Bury the hatchet. Ah, that was my other dream about Agnes. Well, uh, Dragon Boy, uh, will you please exhale? I have to light the oven. <laughs> Agnes, bring in his oatmeal. Yes. What do you have after the oatmeal? 
Obviously an autopsy. Uh-uh, no fair. You've been peeking in the kitchen. Breakfast coming up. Ah, uh, Lily, the insurance companies keep telling us 75% of the accidents happen in kitchens. Why doesn't it happen with Agnes? <laughs> Can't she fall in the oven or something? Oh, now, Edwin, you know you like Agnes. Yeah, it's well done. <laughs> oh, come on, Edwin, relax. Relax? In this house? What was all that jingling this morning? Oh, nothing. Uh, someone had the wrong number. God, I thought you had rented out the living room as a rehearsal hall for a Swiss bell ringing act. <laughs> Where's the morning paper? Oh, um, Agnes. Yeah, honey? Uh, have you this morning's newspaper? Yeah, but I ain't through with it yet. Charming situation. Agnes. Agnes ain't through with it yet. Now, Edwin. What's she doing with it? Censoring it for us? Must my knowledge of what's going on in the world be screened through Agnes? What is she? A local iron curtain? I demand that newspaper now. Edwin, you've forgotten one thing. What? It's Agnes's newspaper. Yeah, and I ain't through with it. Here's your mush. My uh, dear Lily, don't I make enough money selling my honor five times a week on the radio as Uncle Goodhart to afford a morning paper? Edwin, remember, I'm not allowed to buy a paper. Eleven years ago, when Brooks Atkinson, the drama critic, in reviewing your Macbeth, compared you with Maurice Evans, you were so insulted you forbade me to ever bring a New York Times into the house again. Comparing, comparing me with that upstart, Maurice Evans. <laughs> Take away his profile. What have you got? Mickey Rooney. <laughs> well, when Burns Mantle said that in Hamlet, your love scene with Miss Gwendolyn Forbes, who played Ophelia, wasn't convincing, you barred the Daily News from the house. My love scene wasn't convincing. At the time, Miss Gwendolyn Forbes had reached the age of sweet 62. <laughs> what did he expect me to do when I kissed her? Pant? <laughs> Those weren't embraces. I was just holding her up. <laughs> and then when the Tribune critic said Oh, that... right, all right, girl. Lily, what are you driving at? That the only morning newspaper that does ever get into this house belongs to Agnes. And I ain't through with it yet. <laughs> I ain't through with it yet, Agnes. I keep forgetting who your English teacher was. Was it Tony Galento or Slapsy Maxi Rosenblum? <laughs> No, they were the ones who taught me embroidery. Yeah. Here's the newspaper, honey. Thank you, Agnes. See, Edwin? Agnes gave us her paper. Agnes, you will forgive me if I don't fall at your feet and lick your shoes. Edwin, eat your breakfast. I'll read through the theatrical news and see if there's anything interesting. Mm -hmm. Ooh, listen to this gossip from Hollywood. Hollywood? Please, Lily, not while I'm eating. <laughs> This is amazing. Listen. Empire Pictures today announced they are going ahead with plans to film William Shakespeare's big hit, Macbeth. Oh, no. They can't do that. Listen to this. Originally slated to play the role of Macbeth was Red Skelton. <laughs> Esther Williams is set as Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Death, where is thy sting? <laughs> They're doing Macbeth. I can see it now. Macbeth will make his entrance sliding in with a putty nose, and the entire second act will be done underwater. <laughs> well, then, in the name of everything that is sacred to the theater, this must be stopped. Well, now, listen, there's more. Because of a heavy schedule, Red Skelton had to bow out of the role. <laughs> Studio bigwigs have decided on a revolutionary move. They are going to cast a Shakespearean actor in the role of Macbeth. What a novelty. A Shakespearean actor to play Macbeth. <laughs> Gad, these men are pioneers. <laughs> Edwin, listen. Empire's ace talent scout, Clyde Manick, has been sent east to check the possibilities of using that old-time Shakespearean war horse, Edwin the Magnificent Montague. <laughs> Them. Get my lawyer. I, Edwin Montague, in the movies. Here's your coffee, Clark. <laughs> Clark. Clark. Lily, we must buy up all the newspapers. No one must know that the name of Montague is ever even mentioned in a Hollywood column. Now, Edwin, don't get excited. Wanting me, Edwin Montague, for a movie? Why, it's like asking Lily Pons to, to sing the cry of the wild goose. <laughs> well, Edwin, you can deny it. It's too late. 
My character has been sullied. I have been defiled. And this from the man who plays Uncle Goodhart on the radio. All right, Agnes, back to your slop pail. <laughs> At least no one knows I'm Uncle Goodhart, but now, from coast to coast, the name of Montague will be linked with Trigger and Lassie. Here's your toast, Rin Tin Tin. <laughs> Down, Agnes, down. <laughs> Lily, what am I going to do? When the Presidium Club hears of this, I'll be thrown out. Well, admit it's a mistake. They'll think that where there's smoke, there's fire. They'll think that I, too, have deserted the theater for Hollywood gold. I. They'll write my name into the Presidium Book of Infamy alongside of Louis Callahan and Cedric Hardwick. <laughs> and get the columnist to write a retraction. A retraction? That's not enough. I shall drag him out of his foul nest. I shall publicly horsewhip him in Times Square, and then I shall hang him from the marquee of the Paramount by his own typewriter ribbon. <laughs> days, I will let him sway in the breeze while the autograph hounds nip at his heels. <laughs> Good, Edwin. Now, hurry. you have your broadcast of Uncle Goodhart to do. Here's your coat. Uncle Goodhart. Well, he smells like a fresh rose compared to uh, the movies. Hurry, Edwin, you'll be late. I'm going. Remember, Lily, call my lawyer and have him start libel proceedings immediately. Goodbye. The movie. I better death. <laughs> we'll be back with a magnificent Montague in just a moment. Tomorrow and every Saturday evening. There's a big evening's entertainment over most of these NBC stations. First, for mystery, Brian Don Levy stars in Dangerous Assignment as Soldier of Fortune Steve Mitchell. And then Herbert Marshall portrays The Man Called X. There's music. The hit parade brings you the top tunes in the land, followed by songs and fun on The Dennis Day Show. Then Judy Canova gets together with her gang for 30 minutes of Canova-style comedy. And your big evening concludes with Red Foley on Grand Ole Opry on a merry melange of fun and melody in the Western manner. All tomorrow on NBC. And now back to the magnificent Montague. He is in the middle of his Uncle Goodhart radio program. And now, dear listeners, it's time to peek into Uncle Goodhart's mailbag with the silver lining. I have a letter from a lady who signs herself Melancholy Baby. <laughs> it reads, Dear Uncle Goodhart, I am a bride of 15 years. The first two days of our marriage were divine. Then I began noticing little things about my husband. Every night he would sneak out and set Things on fire. <laughs> Houses, factories, stores. At first I tried to overlook these things because, because they made him laugh. <laughs> and easy to get along with. About a month ago, a disturbing thing happened. I woke up in the middle of the night to find that my husband had soaked my foot in gasoline and was about to light it. <laughs> I kidded him out of it. However, now, for some unknown reason, I cannot sleep as well as I used to. <laughs> Since that night, I feel we are drifting apart. <laughs> Dear Uncle Goodhart, what can I say to my husband to save our marriage? Signed, a Melancholy Baby. <laughs> Dear Melancholy Baby. <laughs> You say you and your husband are drifting apart. Now admit it. Isn't it you who are drifting away from him? <laughs> Fess up. <laughs> How many times have I told you, housewives, you're doing the cooking, washing, having babies, bringing them up isn't enough for a happy marriage. <laughs> you must be a pal to your husband. <laughs> you must share his interests. And so, melancholy baby... The next time your husband, as you put it, sneaks out to start fires, 
stop him and say, wait, take me with you. <laughs> Go along. Let him see you are interested in what he is doing. Show him you could be a good companion as well as a wife. Remember, marriage is a partnership. And so, a melancholy baby, take your husband by the hand and go into the world and into the sun and lie. <laughs> So ends another episode of Uncle Goodhart, brought to you by Shalimar Soap. And now, before we leave you until tomorrow, here is Uncle Goodhart with his thought for the day. When you see a burglar robbing your house, taking the silver left by your pa, as he has one leg out of the window to leave, don't forget to say, Ta-ta! <laughs> There, Mr. Montague. Good. Good show. Oh, here comes the director, Mr. Zinza. Oh, there, Mr. Montague. <laughs> I read the paper. How is our big movie star today? Oh, he hit me! <laughs> Zinza, if you ever mention me in connection with the movies again, you will remember that slap you just got as a fond caress. Now, stop irking me. Somebody been irking you, Mr. Montague? Since, or have you been irking him? Irking him? I haven't been irking him. Quiet. I just... <laughs> just don't want any mention of movies or Hollywood. Put that item in the column. We're making plans to have your Uncle Goodhart programs broadcast from Hollywood. What must I do to get it through your armor-plated skulls that I am not going to Hollywood? Oh, I'm so sorry, old man. Sorry, so Red Skelton got your part after all. <laughs> well, gee whiz, Mr. Montague, I'll bet you could play the part as good as Red Skelton any old day. <laughs> oh, Thespis, god of the theater, deliver me from these morons. I am not going to Hollywood, now or ever. The subject is closed. But Mr. Quiet! <laughs> Whit Montague may have sunk to the depths of human depravity where he has to associate with radio people like you, but Hollywood, never, never. Oh, Edwin, you're back. Hello, Lily. Oh, girls, look, Van Johnson. <laughs> oh, Lily, call her off. In the name of heaven, call her off. Agnes, please. Edwin, the place has been a madhouse. Your lawyer says you cannot sue. That guy, Clyde Manick from Hollywood, has been calling every minute on the minute. And Edwin Jarvis, president of the Proscenium Club, called. Oh, no, Lily. Did you explain to him? I couldn't. He's coming up to see you. They're throwing me out. Lily, it's the final curtain. Oh, if I could get my hand in it. I'll get the door. It must be Jarvis. Yes? Hello there, darling. Montague here? Yes? Hello there, ready, old boy. I'm Clyde Manick, Empire Pictures. Have a cigar. <laughs> No, thank you. Oh, of course, the beard. Got to watch out for the fire, huh? <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a pot roast on the fire. Uh, my dear Mr. Manning. Oh, come on, Eddie. Let's stop stalling. Sloughing me off on the telephone. I know the bit. The bit? <laughs> it happens every time. The minute one of you old boys think Hollywood wants you, you play hard to get in order to raise the price. Okay, we'll make you a good deal. Now, let's get the business. Yeah. The execs at Empire got big plans for you. Now, we had this play Macbeth by William Shakespeare kicking around the studio for years. <laughs> the author's dead, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, read the play. Looks like nothing on paper, but get this. Can you see it as a musical? Uh, uh, yeah. Of course, we got to rewrite it a little. Yeah, we do the whole second act underwater. Got to get... Uh... <laughs> Gotta get Esther Williams in a bathing suit, you know. <laughs> it's not gonna be bad for you, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, now, here's what we do for you, Eddie. First, we gotta change your name. Edwin Montague. It's nothing. No appeal, and no one knows it. Yeah. We dreamed up a great new name for you. Get this. Raul Randolph. <laughs> Raul Randolph. Hits you, doesn't it? 
kind of sexy, get what I mean? <laughs> now, we, we get you to Hollywood early so you can spend a little time learning how to act. <laughs> We're getting you the best dramatic coach in Hollywood. Buzzy Andrews. <laughs> Buzzy Andrews. <laughs> he only taught Lauren Bacall everything she knows about acting, that's all. <laughs> Yeah? I know you look a little old, but we'll jazz you up a little. <laughs> Put some caps on those teeth, dye your hair a little. <laughs> Play a little handball to get that belly off you. <laughs> and then, of course, we got to teach you how to swim. Swim? <laughs> you want to be in a second act, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Eddie, my boy, I tell you, Empire's going all out. We're taking you, an unknown, and blowing a lot of dough. You've got to give us your all. What do you say? Mr. Manic. Clyde, Clyde. What's this, Mr. Manic? All right, Clyde. Either name will do for your tombstone. You have given me your plans, I will give you mine. Shoot. First, although I admit I'm well beyond the age of recklessness, I am going to take flying lessons. Flying lessons? Yes. Then I'm going to rent a plane, fly to Hollywood, and drop a bomb in the very center of the Empire Studios. <laughs> <laughs> then I shall circle and strafe any surviving executives who may be crawling out of the rubble. Now, oh, wait, wait, Eddie. Get out of my sight. Okay, if you change your mind... Out, out. I'm staying at the plaza. <laughs> Agnes, open the windows. I need clean, fresh air. Okay, Tarzan. <laughs> Edwin, you were truly magnificent. Lily, I didn't yield. I remained true to the theater. I held the line. Now you'll have to make Jarvis believe that. That's Jarvis. I'll let him in. Lily, you'll have to help me convince him that I had nothing to do with the movie. Here's Jarvis. Jarvis. Montague. Montague. But you are not Montague to me. Not Montague? No. You are still Lord Hamlet, as you were in our first play together. I was your father's ghost, remember? Alas, poor ghost. Oh, speak. I am thy father's spirit, doomed to walk the night. List, list, oh, list. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, I, my prophetic soul, <laughs> it was my uncle who murdered you. I. Revenge this foul! Revenge this foul and most unnatural murder! Aye, revenge! Aye, my pot roast is burning. <laughs> Jarvis, I know what you're going to say. That item about me in that Hollywood column. Montague, the proscenium club board of directors met in an emergency session. Oh, Jarvis, Jarvis, think of my many years of service. Hear my side. I had nothing to do with it. I turned it down. I threw them out. Montague, you didn't. Right out of the door. Oh, Montague, it was decided you must do that motion picture of Macbeth. I what? Montague, you. You are our most trusted soldier in the fight to keep the theater of Shakespeare alive. Only you can keep them from destroying the great work, Macbeth. God, it's the movies. Never, Montague. Think of Macbeth in the hands of Red Skelton. <laughs> oh, but Jarvis, you are sending me to Hollywood. Repulsive as it must be to any true actor. It is your mission, Montague. No. Go, Montague. Go, gallant warrior. Go into that land of the Lotus Eaters, placed before the cameras of those infidels a great Macbeth, as only the magnificent Montague can do. But Jarvis... Go west, Montague. Go west. <laughs> Rest the honor of the immortal bard from the hands of the Philistines. Edwin Montague as Macbeth. You remember it well, Montague. You remember it well. The battle scene. Aye, it is Macduff. <laughs> Hold on to your hats, kids. Here we go again. <laughs> my voice is in my soul. Accursed be that tongue that tells me so. The kneel the child. I will yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet and be baited with the rabble's curse 
I throw my warlike shield. Leon, Nectar! Wonderful, Edwin, wonderful. Montague, that is the way the world must know, Macbeth. Go to Hollywood, not as an actor, but as the voice of culture who saved the memory of Shakespeare. I will go. Edwin, you mean we're going to Hollywood? Hot diggity dog. Gregory Peck, here comes your Agnes. <laughs> Agnes, quiet. Lily, telephone Mr. Manick at the plaza. Yes, Edwin. Montague, the world will long remember the sacrifice. Thank you, good friend. Mr. Manick, one moment, please. Here's the phone, Edwin. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand? Edwin, tell him. Mr. Manick? This is Raoul? <laughs> Raoul Randolph. I shall come to Hollywood to do Macbeth. Thank you. We will be at the railroad station tomorrow. Courage, Montague. The deed is done. So ends a gallant name on the sharp sword of treachery. Pack our bags, Lily. Yes, Edward. Our hearts will be with you in Hollywood, Lord Macbeth. I go, and it is done. The bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan. For it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. Coming next week to your neighborhood theater. <laughs> Good night, dear Jarvis. Good night, sweet prince. Oh. <laughs> Hollywood. Hollywood Lily. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> What will happen when the magnificent Montague reaches Hollywood? Join us again next Friday at the same time for the answer and another transcribed visit with the magnificent Montague, starring Monty Woolley, created and directed by Nat Hyken. Written by Nat Hyken and Billy Friedberg. Ann Seymour was Lily, Pert Kelton was Agnes. Included in tonight's cast were Johnny Gibson, John Griggs, Gavin Gordon, and Art Carney. Jack Ward at the organ. Three times mean good times on NBC. Just listen to the gala lineup this Sunday and every Sunday on NBC. Tallulah Bankhead brings you the 90-minute big show. Phil Harris and Alice Faye bring you 30 minutes of comedy and melody. Hedda Hopper presents the inside stories of show business. Theater Guild on the Air brings you a one-hour drama. Joel McRae stars in Tales of the Texas Rangers. And Quizmaster Jack Parr asks the $64 question. That's on Sunday on NBC. Now, this is Don Pardo saying stay tuned for Duffy's Tavern, which follows immediately. Now, spend a pleasant interval at Duffy's Tavern, next on NBC.